Hello, kindergarten. This is science. Um, I want to show you our praying mantis eggs. They have not hatched yet, but hopefully they will soon. I'll show them to you. So there's three praying mantis eggs in here. Each egg sac could have anywhere from 50 to several hundred baby praying mantis in it. So they're just in this container right now. So there's the egg sacs in there. And here's the lid. But I had to put some mesh netting under the lid because the praying mantis nymphs, when they hatch, they'll be so tiny that they could even get through those slots and escape because they're so tiny when they first hatch. So that's why I put this like screen mesh netting in between. So air can go through this so they can still breathe, but they won't be able to escape. Okay? So... There we go, there's one of the egg sacs. So a Chinese mantis laid this egg sac. And when it hatches, I'll have to put some of their prey in here. Now remember, praying mantis are insectivores. They eat other insects. So they like to eat grasshoppers, crickets, really any insect they can find. But when they first hatch, the nymphs, the babies are so super tiny, they have to eat really, really, really small insects. So online I ordered some fruit fly insects, some little fruit flies that the praying mantis babies will be able to eat when they hatch. So I'll put some fruit flies in there. Then, if you would like to, you don't have to, but if you would like to, you can pick up either from the school parking lot or my driveway, when they hatch, I'm going to make a little praying mantis habitat for everybody. So it'll be just with a plastic cup, a see-through cup so you can see it, with some dirt and some little plants at the bottom. And then I'll put some praying mantis nymphs in the cup, several baby praying mantis. Now, they'll need to eat, right? So I'll put some little fruit flies in there too. They get most of their water of their liquid from the fruit flies. They really don't need to drink too much water at this age, but maybe I'll just spray a little water in there for them. And then I'll put a little bit of the mesh netting over the top to where they can still breathe, but they can't escape. And I'll put a rubber band around it so it stays on, okay? Then, if you want to, if your parents say it's okay, you can pick up one of these praying mantis habitats with the little baby praying mantis inside and you can observe it at your house for a couple days. Then, when the praying mantis babies eat all of their insects in the cup, it'll be time to release them in your yard, okay? So they can catch more bugs. Does anybody remember why most gardeners love praying mantis in your yard? Do you remember in their gardens? Because the praying mantis eat the bugs that eat your plants. So let's say you had a garden um, like I know some of you have, I saw pictures of Ryan's garden, a couple other, Amila does a lot of gardening, a couple others you do a lot of gardening. Um, let's say you have a garden full of like tomato plants or something, um, and then if some cat, some little bugs or something were eating your tomato plants, the praying mantis, you could release them in your garden and they would eat the bugs that are eating your tomato plants, okay? But they don't eat the tomatoes, so that's why gardeners love praying mantis. Okay. Let's read a little book. This book is called, Have You Seen Bugs? With a question mark, because they're asking a question. Have you seen bugs? Bug is another word for an insect. And an insect is, uh, has three body parts and six legs. Praying mantis are a type of insect. And so are butterflies. Have you seen bugs? Itty bitty bugs, small as specks of sand, wide wing bugs, bigger than your hand. Bugs with stripes or speckles or spots, shiny like metal or covered with dots. Iridescent bugs that shimmer in the light, winking blinking bugs that twinkle in the night, dark as bark, green as grass, see-through bugs with wings like glass, shaped like thorns or sticks or leaves, burrowed in bubbles or clinging to trees, hide-and-seek bugs, 
can you see these? So there's some camouflaged bugs in there. Watch out for those slow off bugs, or the, watch out for these show off bugs with colors bold and bright. Flashy, sash, sassy, daring bugs, such easy bugs to sight. Like warning signs, bold markings say, I'm poison, I smell, I sting, stay away. Have you seen bugs and how they move? Long-legged bugs jumping with a bound, short-legged bugs running on the ground. Some are fast, they dart and leap. Some are slow, they crawl and creep. There's that praying mantis camouflaging on the grass or on the leaves of that plant. Bugs that flutter and scurry and dive. Bugs that buzz around to hive. Walking on the ceiling, crawling up a wall. Some bugs hardly move at all. What about water bugs? Walking on the water, swimming under water bugs, skimming over water bugs. Oaring, soaring, whirling, twirling, striding, gliding. Have you seen these? Have you heard bugs? Bugs have no voices, but they can sing rubbing their legs, whirring their wings. Busy crickets and thickets wait for night to fall. Then they rub their legs together and chirp their mating call. A bug has no ears on its little bug head, but some bugs hear through their legs instead, while others use antenna to taste and hear and smell and tiny hairs that touch and tell and help them find their mates as well. Some bugs even use their feet to take a taste before they eat. Have you seen bugs and how they eat? Beetles have mouths. They can bite and chew and sniff, while others, like a, the butterfly, have mouths with straws that sip. There's its proboscis. Most bugs dine on plants, some bugs dine on meat, others take a nip of blood or sip of nectar sweet. Have you seen baby bugs? Inside a hive, nesting in hair, bugs hatch from eggs everywhere. Underwater, underground, in so many places, bug eggs are found. In the bark of trees or wrapped up in leaves, Baby bugs hatch from all of these. Baby bugs are small, but just for a bit. Little bugs keep growing till their skin doesn't fit. But some bugs form a chrysalis or spin a fine cocoon. Where abracadabra, they grow wide wings in a magical changing room. There's a monarch, right? Have you seen working bugs? From flower to flower, bugs work as they go, carrying pollen that makes gardens grow. If it weren't for bugs, orchards would be bare. You couldn't have an apple, an orange, or a pear. There wouldn't be corn or pumpkins or wheat. Without bugs, we've had, we would have little to eat because bugs pollinate all of the plants that grow our food, the plants we eat. Burrowing, weaving, or building a nest, gathering, gardening, guarding, seldom a rest, working by day, working by night, spinning wonders, webs, or taking off in flight. Oh, very nice book. However, spiders aren't actually bugs. They're actually an arachnid because they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs, not six legs like bugs, but that's okay. That was a great book. Okay. Um, so today's Friday, and if we were still in the classroom, sometimes on Fridays we would watch a little Wild Kratts, so I posted some Wild Kratts videos for you today about praying mantis.